Oh my god, it's the last day of the reading rush. Everybody stay calm. I'm getting a pretty late start to my day. I just got my video up. It's almost noon and I haven't had breakfast. I haven't had coffee. I haven't read anything. Our goals for today are to finish the seep. I have about 100 pages left of this. I'm very excited to continue in it. I have 100 pages left of Bad Feminist, but if we do end up going to the river, that's like an hour drive, so I can listen to a good portion during that. The audiobook says I have less than four hours left, so that's less than two hours of the audiobook. So that's kind of perfect. And then Navigate Your Stars, which I'm doing for the challenge to read outside, and it's really short. There is no page count, so I'm going to have to count them in order to fill out this, which is the story that got posted to the Reading Rush yesterday. That's the reason I didn't do an update for that yesterday is because they posted like the wrap up story and I wasn't ready to fill it out. I'm still not ready to fill it out. You know what we'll do? Let's fill it out right now. I'll fill it out with my intentions and then at the end of the day, I'll see if I can actually post it if I completed everything. Number of pages read. We have to do math again. 55, 197, 220. Okay, that's 1,559 pages. Number of books finished, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. Number of challenges completed. A cover that matches your birthstone, a book that starts with the, a book inspired by a movie you've already seen, that's not happening. Read the first book you touch, did that. Read a book completely outside your house, I am doing this. Read a book in a genre you've always wanted to read more of horror. Read a book that takes place in a different continent. I'm counting this even though the setting is not a part of the story. <laughs> so challenges completed is six out of seven. Oh, how do I answer best book you read? I don't know what's gonna end up being my favorite. Right now my favorite is Bad Feminist. Favorite reading rush moment? Oh my god. Vlogging in general. I'm gonna say um, my Instagram live because I only had time to do one and it was really fun getting to chat with you all and giving you a behind the scenes of the vlog that day. What else do we need to do? Oh my gosh, I need to do the reading rush photo challenge. I peaked last night, it got posted at like midnight and I was online and I saw that it says use your books to make an artwork and I was like, what does that mean? What do I do? There is no like parameters. You just do whatever you want. You're free to do whatever. Just make something artistic. I feel like this is kind of an overwhelming challenge to do on the last day when there's so much to do. But I think you can go as like simplistic or complex as you want depending on how much time you have. So I grabbed a whole bunch of books last night and put them aside in purple, blues, and teals on their spines. And I've always wanted to do this like big um, on the floor like design with book spines. And this is gonna take so much work and if it doesn't look good, I don't have time to do something else. So I'm a little worried about it. Here are all the books I grabbed. I'm going to attempt to make mountains, I think. I was gonna do a wave. I was trying to think of some simple shapes and I don't know. Whoa, shit, a lot of bucks. Don't catch. I'm a little lightheaded because I didn't eat and then I picked up all these books. I'm good now. We did it. We've got a blue mountain, a teal mountain, a purple mountain. I didn't have enough of certain colors so I had to put in like some green but in Photoshop I'm gonna edit it. Not so it like is totally fake but so it blends just a little better together. And since I did it on this blanket I can just tuck all the books up and shove them out of the way. I've just posted my picture and a bunch of you asked what my shelves look like after so i thought i'd be pretty much little... still full <laughs> it wasn't it didn't take that long to do this how long do you think it took me i was able to do what the dishes so maybe 
35 minutes? Yeah, half an hour. But putting them back 48 hours is later. gonna be the worst part for sure. All right, we're driving to the river flow so I can listen to my audiobook. Robbie's blowing up the floaties and we're technically outside, so I'm gonna re-navigate your stars. That book was literally perfect. I'll tell you about it when I get home. Five out of five. Is anyone scared that I brought my whole camera with me? I mean, you've only lost one waterproof camera in the river. Yeah, this is definitely not waterproof. I'm not even reading, so I don't know why I really need to vlog. If you're wondering why we have a fourth boat, it's for snacks. We found a beach and a stream along our river. So we're stopping for lunch. Uh, hello. It's been 24 hours since the last time I talked to you. 24 hours since I've been on the internet. I took a hiatus unintentionally. So we pretty much spent the entire day on the river yesterday and even longer than intended. Um, it was an adventure. We might have gotten a little lost. We might have washed up on a little island. We might have had to swim across a raging river with only 20 seconds from where we left the island to where the exit was to get off of the river and back to civilization. Then it was a long, dark drive home, and then I fell asleep the second I walked into my house. And then today I woke up and still had to work a normal, you know, eight hour work shift. Here we are. It's the late afternoon and I'll update you on everything. So I did complete all of the books. And admittedly, The Seep, I finished on my lunch break. There was only, I think, 40 pages left and I flew through it and I really, really loved it. So this is about this like alien entity and we're in like a utopian type future because The Seep like doesn't let people feel pain or regret or guilt or sorrow. Um, it talks about uh, the idea of like immortality and people can choose when they want to pass on and how they want to pass on. This is like my perfect um, existential sci-fi that I always talk about. It's weird. Our main character is dealing with grief and she's pondering her own mortality and she's kind of reminiscing on the olden ways and how um, how better things were in the past and how everyone is so obsessed with the future and how much better everything is but there's a group of people who are just like reminiscing about the past a lot before the seep came into their lives and changed everything and it's just such an interesting commentary on the world i think you could make a ton of parallels with what the seep is in like actual modern day different things in our society that um, make us ignore what's going on in the real world things we do to escape and trina starts to struggle with the seep as a concept because the whole point is that everyone is happy and nobody fights and everyone is right and everything is perfect but the whole point of the seep is that everybody has free will and by controlling people's minds and making everyone happy and making everyone make the right choices all the time that's not really free will it was super interesting overall i definitely recommend i would also recommend um you go look for reviews from trans people as well as native people because right at the very end of this book um, Trina talks about her identity and how important it is to her and as I don't believe Chana Porter is trans or native um, I think it's just important to seek out reviews that are talking about um, that type of representation. The thing is with these identities being discussed but not really being a part of the story I don't really know that there is much representation to talk about and i wonder if um the kind of idea of her of it not being a part of the story is intentional as the seep inadvertently not like hides things about people but like history doesn't matter so much but i think from a reader's perspective um somebody who does share an identity with the main character if 
those do not play a part in the character's role in general if they don't influence her life or the way she moves about her life or how people interact with her it's not a question of if authors are allowed to write out outside of their experience but should they and with what intent i've talked about this in the past with dare mighty things by heather kaczynski uh the ten thousand doors of january by Al alex e harrow the idea of writing beyond your own experience and just making sure that as readers we are looking into the opinions of the identities that are being represented if we nor the author belong to those marginalized groups for all i know no one has called into question any representation in here um, maybe it's had a ton of sensitivity readers maybe a lot of beta readers i know that Shanna porter is a co-founder of the octavia project which is a stem and fiction writing program for girls and gender non-conforming youth so i would assume that there were some early readers um who would identify with trina but obviously people are not a monolith and uh i think it's just about us making sure as readers who do not identify with the character's identities and neither does the author that we seek out reviews from people discussing those things and also ensuring that if you are picking up a book by a non-owned voices author um, that you also make the intention to pick up authentic voices as well so we can also get into the three questions of the video which i said yesterday i was going to or this is the day before yesterday I don't know anymore i said that i was going to make them all bookish and i actually thought i would focus on the book recommendations requests so i got asked my favorite indigenous authored book which i think is a great offshoot of this conversation i was going to recommend three books but then suddenly i had five in my hand so um i've talked about this so much that you're probably sick of it it's love beyond body space and time an indigenous lgbt sci-fi anthology this is urban fantasy all from lgbt and two spirit uh perspectives authors characters the marathies by sherry dimeline is one of my absolute favorite books of all time and it's like a futuristic setting um but very much a reflection of the real world and history and current day people are hunting indigenous folks for their bone marrow which is said to uh, give people the ability to dream split tooth by tanya dagak is flawless incredible about a girl in nunavut and um, pregnancy and animals and it's very whimsical and strange and the audiobook i've recommended so many times but the throat singing in it is just such a strong addition to the text so i highly recommend doing both read it with your eyes and with your ears moon of the crested snow by what you should grace is another one of my favorites it's a really slow apocalyptic story it's set in an anishinaabe community and people are coming to them um infiltrating their community to get food or power or just like take their resources from them because the whole world has kind of lost um power and such and then mapping the interior by stephen graham jones i have to mention because it's short horror that's amazing and it follows a teenage boy and it's about grief um and there are some weird dreams involved it's so hard to talk about the plot of such a short book but i loved it a lot just kidding i have a sixth one uh burning in this midnight dream by louise bernice half this is a stunning poetry collection and she focuses on residential schools and reconciliation grief and trauma for all of these books i would recommend you go to the goodreads pages or wherever and read own voices reviews because i can only speak on a book so much when it is not my representation to speak on another one is do you have any own voice non-binary or transgender book recommendations oh my gosh i also have five of these okay i have stay gold by tobley mcsmith and felix ever after by case and calendar which are two high school stories about trans boys and their experiences their love lives their friendship their family um they're both difficult reads but joy-filled reads they do things very differently um they are both own voices 
books, but I think that um, people will find different representation in each one. And then highly recommend River Solomon. I still have an Unkindness of Goats sitting on my TBR shelf that I want to get to soon, um, but I also read The Deep. I talked about this in a mermaid vlog. I read it during the Blackathon, the queer Blackathon. This was inspired by a song that I highly recommend you listen to as well. Um, the afterword of this is also amazing. The audiobook is amazing and it's about mermaids um, and th the history of enslavement and not knowing your background and your culture. We follow this sea creature who has to hold all of these painful memories of their ancestors and it's just such a strong book. For a poetry collection I highly recommend Don't Call Us Dead by Dinez Smith. I've said this so many times I want everyone to pick it up. It made me cry, it made me laugh, all of the feelings. And then all of Anna, Anna Marie McClemore, but I think my favorite is Blanca Roja. Their books are always full of a whole cast of queer, non-binary, um, and LGBT characters. So definitely look into like the specific representation of each one. But this story revolves around a family history of swans and sisters and fights to the death and there's some romance involved and it's very lovely. Um, so as far as authors go, there are five authors that I would recommend. I also got asked my favorite nonfiction books. So I did actually grab three for this one, but technically I have five because now we can move on to the other books that I completed that I haven't told you about. But the three that I read a long time ago that I wanted to mention are The Last Lecture by Randy Pausch. Honestly, I haven't read this in so long, so I don't know like the impact it would have on me, but when I originally um, heard the lecture and read this like maybe 15 years ago, it was very impactful. It's about really achieving your childhood dreams, which makes it sound um, a lot more like fluffy than it is. Another one I highly recommend is Little Black Book by Utegwa Uagba. This is the essential thing to read when you are first, I know this is for a very specific person, but especially if you're like just finishing art school or deciding to go into an artistic career. This covers so many beginner things that you need to know about from like making an invoice to knowing your worth to creating a healthy work-life balance. It's little and it's powerful. Another one is I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya. This is like short essays and experiences of her history with uh, experiencing transphobia, homophobia, general misogyny, trauma in her life, and it's a really powerful journey to read. And then I read two non-fiction books this week that I now want to recommend because I gave them both five stars. That's Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay and Navigate Your Stars by Jasmine Ward. I probably gushed enough about Bad Feminist the last couple days, so I don't know if I really need to go in, but she really created just a perfect commentary and critique on modern day feminism and feminism as it appears in media. Movies, TV, music. It talks so much about books, which I loved so much. Literally every single chapter was perfect. Uh, we focused on so many different things and I know that she has other books that are offshoots of these conversations. I have read some books by her. I have some more on my TBR. I can't believe it took me this long to get to Bad Feminist. I know everyone has pretty much read it, so I probably don't need to go in any deeper, but just know like it's it's perfect. The audiobook is great too. I shouldn't say perfect. Nothing is perfect. I think it could actually have been a little more inclusive, especially when she got to the points about womanhood and motherhood, pregnancy. I don't think the language is going to make like everyone feel included. Not that it's intentionally uninclusive. I hope that made sense. And then the last one is Jasmine Ward, Navigate Your Stars, which is a commencement speech that she gave at Tulane University. And I read this and then I checked out the audiobooks. I noticed it was on script and the audiobook is amazing. It's only like 20 minutes and there's this like little musical cadence in the background and she's just so lovely to listen to. And this is just something that I love. 
I love when speeches get turned into a reading experience with art. I've read a few of them and I love them. I think the overall goal of this is just to encourage people. That's the whole point of it. It's a speech. It's not a book. There are certain things that she was talking about that I was like, oh my gosh, I want an entire chapter about the thing you just used, like three words to describe. But it's about just starting, just taking a step, achieving your goals. Again, it sounds um, more simplistic than it actually is, but I feel like this was an impactful text. She gives a little bit of her family history and talks about how she developed as a writer, the opportunities that she got, the steps that she took. Real success requires step after step after step after step. It requires choice after choice. It demands lifelong education and passion and commitment and persistence and hunger and patience. This might be things that you've like heard before, but if you just need a little like uplifting boost of like perseverance i think this is cool so as far as uh this thing that i filled out i never posted because like i said i just was on the river all day went straight to sleep worked all day i forgot to even like advertise the video i posted yesterday on my instagram stories i also forgot to even try a new starbucks drink yesterday just sabotaging myself i really just vanished um but i wanted to say i appreciate you guys so much for mentioning me in your things. I just checked back in on the internet for the first time in a day and there's just so many mentions of me in people's stories saying that my vlogs were their favorite thing or my live or connecting with me in general, which uh, is so flattering. The Reading Rush is a really important readathon to my experience on booktube. It's the first readathon I ever participated in back when I thought it was called a bookathon. It was one of the first readathons that invited me to make video content for them. And it is historically the number one week out of the year that I connect with people. I make new friends because there's such specific hashtags and ways to find people that lets us connect in such a specific way as opposed to just like hashtag bookstagram or like searching a book haul on YouTube. With that said, hopping back on the internet today, I saw a lot of discourse and probably even more that I missed yesterday um, talking about the reading rush and um, how they handled their book club pick. I heard they did a live show, I think it was the day before yesterday, which I remember popping into like, but I think I was late because when I popped in, I don't even think I realized it was a book club discussion. I just got the notification that they were live and I was trying to support and I popped in, they were talking about their nails and they were doing a little Q&A. So I'm super disappointed to hear that neither hosts read the book club pick, um, which is one thing to encourage um, participants to read a book and have a discussion and then not follow through as a host but it's a whole nother level that it was a black author uh, in a time when most of us are taking the opportunity to especially promote um, black voices especially with the themes of the book being like performative allyship and i wish that i had picked up the book i wish that i'd known that it was the book club pick. i remember seeing a vote happen on the website i voted for house on mango street because i wanted everyone to read it and then i'd never followed through with like checking back to see what was picked because as i talked about before i didn't utilize the website at all this year i just think that the readathon and the hosts are their intentions with the readathon are maybe not where a lot of the participants we wish that the readathon was going. So I hopped on the Instagram live for a couple minutes yesterday morning as well. Um, and they were talking about how they've read so many more books than normal. So I actually, I wish that their podcast that was the way I talked about earlier that was titled, um, what was it called? Competitive reading. I really wish that they had actually talked about competitive reading in that podcast because Maybe it would have given them some more insight on um, that they also maybe shouldn't worry so much about numbers as opposed to intent. That's the only reason I can really think of that they wouldn't have gotten to the book club pick is that maybe they were worried about getting a lot of books done quickly as opposed to 
um, like the longer book the only black authored book I think that was on either of their TBRs and again that's just a conversation caring about numbers as opposed to intent so that's a really frustrating end to the readathon though I know that a lot of people weren't participating in the readathon to begin with because the ways that they felt um, excluded or that the readathon wasn't as uh, socially aware as they should be and I agree I think that the hosts have spoken continually about becoming less and less involved with the community and the internet uh, if you pay attention to what they talk about again it's just like I think that their perspective and intentions uh, are in a different place than a lot of people participating including myself also again I didn't see the live but from what I understand they were like joking about um, not reading the book and thinking it was, I haven't talked to them at all so I don't know any thoughts behind you know what they were actually thinking I can only assume things but it's just disappointing to hear um, them making light of it I think there were definitely some solutions that could have been done instead of uh, going live and doing that but the fact that it didn't occur to them to do any of those things I just goes I think it goes to show um, that the solution when running the biggest YouTube book readathon um, and getting overwhelmed and being so busy and having so much to do maybe isn't necessarily the solution being to add more people underneath to take um, a brunt of the work but maybe it's expanding the ownership or management team and I think that is kind of a true thing across a lot of businesses and fields is if you surround yourself only by people and you only um, take influence from people who are going to just agree with you have the exact same thoughts and opinions as you uh, not challenge you in any way not hold you accountable for your actions I think that's when issues really arise so to end this video I'm getting hotter and hotter Can you... <laughs> I think this is partially a sunburn and partially just like me overheating um, but I want to end as I've ended every vlog this week with three things I want you to care about and I think um, it's worth mentioning uh, especially in this context black creators to support black owned businesses black owned and run readathons book clubs it's not that black creators in our community um, don't mess up and make mistakes and should be held to some unrealistic standard and offering that support does not absolve non-black people from creating inclusive diverse events uh, and following through with true inclusion and responsibility but since we are talking about a book by a black author that did not get the attention it deserved i feel like um talking about black run events is definitely something that you should care about all the time not just when other people fuck up um so one of them is the blackathon so i will just link all these down below the Blackathon, the Black Lit Readathon, and the Fuckathon. The Blackathon, I believe the original creator, there's a bunch of um, hosts, but I believe it was Jesse from Bowties and Books, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, then the Black Lit Readathon is Seiji's Readathon, and Fuckathon, Fuckathon, that sounded aggressive, I'm so sorry, um, is, uh, was created by Noria at Noria Reads. So I would definitely keep an eye out for future rounds of these readathons um, and just reach out to to people and tell them that you would love to participate in future rounds or you're looking forward to the continuation of these readathons along with readathons we also have black run book clubs in our community so we have um these ones are all pretty brand new so i would definitely look into the unfriendly black hotties book club i know that they just recently announced that the next month's pick is going to be such a fun age the book that was you know intended to be read by the reading rush hosts so if you want a chance to read that and participate in an actual discussion that happens the links down below and then oh I also well I was just gonna say I picked up this because of them I only have like five days now to read this before their live show happens so I also wanted to let you know the live show is happening soon and everything will be linked down below for that we also have the crusty book club which is brand new by Chanel um, 
I know I think it's radio silence they're reading this month or August I think it's just starting in August but then September I'm spoiling my entire next book haul but A Song of Wraiths and Ruin is the pick so I had to pick it up to read along with everybody and then I'm keeping an eye on Erin's book club the Busy Bee book club I shared it to my stories a couple weeks ago I'm so excited that there is like a adult fantasy readathon because I know a lot of people are always looking for that um so I will link it again down below I'm keeping my eye out for books that I'm interested in. We will see what's happening. And I know there's a Discord server for that as well if you want like an early, early information about it. And then I thought I would also mention three black owned um, book boxes because people are always talking about book boxes on here. I do not personally subscribe to any book boxes, but if you are especially seeking diverse books, uh, arriving at your doorstep that are a bit of a surprise. The ones that I know about are called Call Number. Um, there's one called Now in Books and there's one that's Black Lit. And then I saw two that are like in the works and coming up. One of them is called The Margins Box. I think what it is is they're currently on hiatus so definitely go follow them and encourage them um, and support them and subscribe because they they just posted a tweet that was like we're coming back we're working hard and then there's one that I just saw called Canola's Book Bag and it says it's coming in fall and it prioritizes black voices as well as black owned businesses so some book boxes are just a book and some book boxes come with little trinkets so I think it's awesome that there are ones that are supporting specifically black owned businesses as we've discussed in these three things I want you to care about supporting black owned businesses is important and that's it I think we're done this week I read eight books technically I finished one a little bit late I read Coyote Tales by Thomas King which got five stars I'm going to buy a copy as soon as possible to add to Liam's bookshelf Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power I gave three and a half stars The Seep by Chan of Porter, I gave five stars. What Mama Left Me by Renee Watson, I gave five stars. Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsford, I gave five stars. Also, let me mention the reasons I originally read The Seep and Follow Me to Ground were due to Jesse's influence and Sage pushing me to read it. I want to get better about acknowledging the people who are the reasons that I picked up certain books. Um, I also read Woman Hollering Creek and Other Stories by Sandra Cisneros, which I gave four stars. Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, which I gave five stars. And Navigate Your Stars by Jasmine Ward, which I gave five stars. I think this is the most successful readathon maybe I've ever participated in. I loved so much of what I read. I had a really good time um, vlogging and participating and mostly the community element of it and connecting with everyone on Instagram. Um, it's just always a really great part of this readathon for me, but I will continue to put this much effort into my own experience with other readathons because that's important. I will see you later. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. I hope you had a great readathon. Bye.